Hey guys, and what's going on? It's Matt's Reacts back with another episode, and today we are finally going to talk about fish. I love my fish. Um, they make me extremely happy. I find the tanks very fun to create, and the fish are hilarious to watch, um, especially my new little polar parrot cichlids and my platinum parrot cichlids. They're really fun to watch swim around. They're really small and chubby they're so cute um if you're new to the channel uh this is usually a reaction channel but i promised a while ago long ago that i was gonna talk about fish and the tanks that i have and how to start up a tank and we always start these videos with words of affirmation so that is exactly what i want to always have in your guys's mind that you you know, if you're having a bad day, you come watch this video. Suddenly, it's not so bad out there. And I want to rhyme, remind you guys that you're never alone. You are wise. You are kind. You are valued. You are appreciated. And you are loved. And I hope everyone is having a warm, warm day. It is minus 19 degrees Celsius here without the wind chill. It's a little warm outside. And, uh, yeah. But uh, I have four tanks now. Ooh, four. There we go. Four tanks now. Um, I have a short body flower horn. I have South American and Central American cichlids in the form of blue acaras and uh, parrot cichlids. I then have an African cichlid tank, which is one of the funniest tanks to watch because there's always, always dominance issues and you can see them flying around the tank. And my last tank, I actually have a golden albino glow in the dark axolotl and i we or my girlfriend named her medusa because of the frills that she has and i think it's a fantastic name and to start up an aquarium it's not as hard as people make it out to be and it's not it's not like something you need to have a bajillion years of experience with um, I was fortunate enough to start fish keeping when I was very young. Um, back when I was, oh God, 10, 11, 10. Anyway, it was an African cichlid tank and I adored it. Um, it was my favorite tank. I built it with my dad and so I recreated it here in my room with almost the exact same fish. But, uh, the first thing that you're going to want to know about cycling a tank is that it takes patience a lot of patience okay so first you're going to fill you up your aquarium with water right you're going to add something called water conditioner now here we use prime um there's many other different brands but you want to follow the instructions exactly and you might even want to overdose the prime because prime is not actually harmful to fish um then you want to add something called starter fish. Now, there are a lot of people that think goldfish are a fantastic starter fish. This is kind of wrong. Goldfish get monstrous. It does not matter the size of the tank. They will always strive to hit about the 7 to 8 inch mark. That's about like this. It's a big fish. Um, what you want to do is get a hardier fish. Black skirt tetras. White cloud minnows. Golden white cloud minnows for a little bit more flair, and zebra danios. These are the four fish that I would recommend for starting a tank. Now, the reason that you need fish to start a tank is you want to build up the bacteria within the tank. That way, when you add in your, as I call it, end game fish, the tank is safe and the levels in the water are at the point where it can sustain this fish because some fish are a much tougher specimen than others and the fish that i listed are going to be the toughest ones in my opinion everyone has a lot of different opinions i'm not saying anyone's wrong i'm not saying anyone's right i'm just saying what i have done and done successfully for many many years um you're gonna want to let these fish sit in the tank for about three to four weeks and during those three to four weeks, you're going to go through different, I would say, spikes in your tank, okay? So the first spike you're going to get is your ammonia spike. 
like like this there you go okay that is the sign of the tank going from ammonia and then it transforms into nitrite and then it transforms into nitrate and then it levels off now this can take longer than four weeks it can take a little bit shorter than four weeks but i always aim for the month the about the month mark and not the month of february as it is a little shorter um after that i would recommend getting a test kit for your water and having it tested either by a store or by yourself to make sure that the nitrite and the ammonia levels are zero those are the two most harmful things for fish absolutely will kill your fish um Another big thing that you need to do is to not touch the tank. And when I say this, I literally mean do not do any water changes. Do not do any filter cleanings. Do not even just, just sprinkle a little food in there and just leave it. You know, you're not going to need to do anything past that because these fish will poop. The bacteria lives off the fish. The fish live off the bacteria. It creates an environment. It's a symbiotic relationship. And you come to the point where it's like, hey, my tank is safe now. Um, for chemical startups, I'm not going to speak too much on those as I do not have a lot of experience with those as I've always done it the fish way. There are a lot of other channels out there that I've seen that explain the chemical ones, but I will be sticking to the fishy boys and how you do those. Um... It is extremely important to never overfeed your fish during this process. Leftover food at the bottom of the tank is going to create a toxic environment for the fish. Okay? That is very bad. It creates nitrite. And nitrite is even worse than ammonia. It will kill your fish very fast. They will get something called brown gill disease and die. And I don't want anyone's fish dying. I don't want anyone's fish suffering. So let's just stick with a little pinch. Make sure they eat it all. If you see some drop to the bottom and they're not eating it, scoop it out with a net. But do not do any water changes. Do not do any filter cleanings. You can top up the water if it evaporates. And this is for fresh water only. Salt water cycling is a lot different. I don't have a lot of experience with salt water. So that is another thing I will not be touching on. But to recap, if you have a 10 gallon tank, you add in three white cloud minnows, three golden white cloud minnows, or three zebra daniels, or three black skirt tetras. You put the water conditioner or prime that takes out the chloramites out of the water, and you just let the sit, fish sit in there for a month. No filter cleanings, no water changes. And after that, you will want to make sure that you get a fish that is the right size for a 10-gallon aquarium, like a dwarf Rami. Um, no angelfish, no nothing like that. Like 10 gallons is quite small. And the biggest cause of stress is the lack of space and environment and the invasion of territory within fish. I will be speaking more about fish. That is one of my greatest passions in later videos. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. Comment what kind of fish tanks you have or have had in the past. I'd love to hear everyone's story. And I can't wait to see you next time on Matt's Reacts. And as you can tell, I'm already very, very pumped to talk about fish. We'll be discussing around different parts of the world. Like flower horns, Africans, Central Americans, South American, axolotls. We'll be discussing it all. But thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.